LeBron rips Charles Barkley's comments and he actually says some of his own things to Barkley that Barkley's going to fire some shots back. We can all wait on that one for sure. But what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, we, we have to talk about this. I mean, for those that don't know, which I don't know if you've been living under a rock or something this past day or two, but if you don't know about the LeBron James, Charles Barkley feud or the beef, now you're going to find out in this video. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Charles Barkley and his actual role in TNT and in media because it actually has a huge influence on some of the things he says. We're going to talk about LeBron James and the anger. I guess the anger he feels within himself now and he's just letting it all out. And let me put you in a scenario right now because this is what my scenario was. I was sitting at school with a friend during our lunch break or whatever, I can't remember what it was, but he was like, I, I said, did you hear about the LeBron James and Charles Barkley feud? And he's like, no, I sort of heard about it, I saw it, but I didn't actually know what happened. So I, I tried to explain it to him. And to be honest, as I was explaining it to him, which to be honest, I did a really poor job of explaining it. So this video is gonna sum it up. But as I was explaining it to him, I realized LeBron James didn't get angry at what Charles Barkley said. Rather, he was just taking shots at Charles Barkley, which leads me to believe that this isn't something LeBron James has just said because of what Charles Barkley and his statements were. This is something that LeBron James has been holding in. This is something that he's been wanting to say for a while. This is something that he's just finally letting out after all these years of Charles Barkley comments, and it is crazy what he said. I'm gonna let you hear what Charles Barkley said, and then we're going to go into what LeBron James said. So here it is. LeBron James' comments were blank. Inappropriate, uh, whiny, uh, all the above. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they have given him everything he wanted. They have the highest payroll in NBA history. They, they bought, he wanted J.R. Smith last summer. They paid him. He wanted Shumpert last summer. They bought in, Ky, uh, excuse me, Kyle Carver. They, he's the best player in the world. Does he want all the good players? He don't want to compete. He is an amazing player. But this notion, they're the defending champs. And for him to be trying to hold anything over Dan Gibbons' head, and I love all these uh, young, these wild punk-ass reporters on television who's afraid to call LeBron. LeBron's a great player and a great guy. It just pisses me off that a guy that great don't want to compete. So as you heard, Charles Barkley obviously had a few things to say about LeBron James, how he was whiny and all this and all that. You know what he said. I mean, you, you just heard it. But now LeBron James had something to say back. He said, I'm not going to let him disrespect my legacy like that. I'm not the one who threw somebody through a window. I never spat on a kid. I never had an unpaid debt in Las Vegas. I never said I'm not a role model. I never showed up to All-Star Weekend on Sunday because I was in Vegas all weekend partying. All I've done for my entire career is represent the NBA in the right way. 14 years, never got in trouble. Respect the game, print that. Now, what do you think about that? LeBron James doesn't say anything about what Charles Barkley said. He just said, I'm not the one who threw somebody through a window. I'm not the one who spat on a kid. I never had unpaid debts in Las Vegas. I never said I'm not a role model. I never showed up to All-Star Weekend on Sunday because I was in Las Vegas all weekend partying. That is what LeBron James said. You can tell that he's been holding this in for a while because none of what he just said refers to what Charles Barkley said in the first place, which obviously you heard it, but he said, Does he want all the good players? He don't want to compete? Uh, whiny? Uh, all the above. Now, what I find interesting, and I think people really forget about this, Charles Barkley, he is a personality, right? He is somebody that a TV station loves. He is somebody that the media loves because he will say whatever he's on. I mean, he just says whatever's on his mind. You know that. Like, when you think about Charles Barkley, he's not afraid. He doesn't care. He will say what's on his mind. Straight up. Like, that is Charles Barkley. He did it in the NBA. He's going to do it outside of the NBA after he retired, which is what he's done. I mean, we know what he said in terms of interviews. Hey, this is Charles Barkley. I hope you're enjoying the NBA playoffs on TNT. 
And I hope you have enjoyed my T-Mobile Fave 5 list. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I got two words for you. Steve Nash and Chris Paul. Must see TV. That's more than two words. You didn't say two words. You said quick to the point. You just said I got two words. <laughs> Steve Nash and Chris Paul must see. That's TV. why I messed up because I was Steve. trying to think of two words. Y'all could, I could have said that. that. Okay. Two words. Nash and Paul. That's three words. That's three words. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Even the Olympics, the 1992 Dream Team Olympics. Marin. I don't know anything about Angola, but Angola's in trouble. How did you feel in 1972 when the Soviet Union beat the United States in that wild game? Well, I had just flunked my entrance exam in the kindergarten, so I really, that was the only thing, you know. It was funny as hell. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, that's besides the point. I'm just saying, Charles Barkley, he's a personality. He will say what's on his mind. LeBron James obviously didn't like that. I mean, he didn't like Charles Barkley calling him whiny. He didn't like all the comments about Barkley, and LeBron James fired back. He fired back in a personal matter. And this is not a good thing because Charles Barkley, he will fire back. You can expect that. Right now, I don't know when he'll I don't know when he'll fire back, but he'll fire back with some sort of comment about LeBron James now. Because those are really personal things. And by the way, I know that Charles Barkley did respond to what LeBron James said. He said, I stick by what I said. I'm not going to make this personal. He was just whiny last week. I'm good, I'm straightforward, I'm not going to let this be a personal issue. Now, I know that he said that, and I guess it's cool that he sort of just sticks by what he said, but if you expect Charles Barkley, out of all people, to stay quiet, then I can't see that happening, I'm sorry. I think Charles Barkley is going to come out, say something stupid, I can feel it, I think this is going to be a real, actual, personal beef going on, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. He, he is on TV with Ernie Johnson, and Ernie's going to keep him in line, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. And I will say this in Charles Barkley's defense. Even when Charles Barkley made those statements about LeBron James being whiny and LeBron James that, the original statement that Charles Barkley made, he also went on to say that he thinks LeBron is a great guy, and he thinks LeBron is a great player. He thinks LeBron James is the greatest player in the world. He is an amazing player. LeBron, LeBron's a great player and a great guy. It just pisses me off that a guy that great don't want to compete. So, this definitely isn't something that Charles Barkley meant to be a hater, as LeBron James calls it, but... It's just the wrong time. It is seriously the wrong time. LeBron just came off a month where he hasn't lost this many games since his third NBA season. They went 7-8 and eight this month, lost more games than they won. He's just... It's a bad time. It's really bad timing for Charles Barkley. But it doesn't change the fact that LeBron James said these comments about Barkley. And it does bring up some interesting points. Let me know if you want me to make a video about any of the things like the time Charles Barkley threw a man through a window. I think that would be a pretty cool video idea, but let me know if you want to see that. Anyway, there is one more thing I want to say, and this is just quotes from Charles Barkley now, a day later after what LeBron James said. He said, Clearly he had done his homework on some screw-ups I've had in my life. I appreciate him reading. Clearly he Googled me and found out some things because I think he was young when I was playing, so he clearly Googled me, so I appreciate that. But listen, man, I'm not going to get upset that someone said something bad about me. I'm not, I'm not 12 years old. I think when you don't like the message, you just kill the messenger. Some of the things he said about me are correct. That still does not make my message incorrect. I thought he was really whiny and complaining the past couple of weeks, talking about how he's got no help. Dude, you just won the championship. He then went on to and continued saying, I've only met LeBron James casually. He's always been great to me. I think I've been great and cordial to him. But this notion that we have to be friends, we're never going to be friends. That's not a negative thing. I'm not friends with none of these guys in the NBA right now, the young guys. My job is to do my job, but I do understand that this is a different generation where anytime you say something about young guys, they take it personally. They never worry about whether the criticism is fair or not. They take it personally. That doesn't bother me. Which in, in defense to once again Charles Barkley, that is true. It seems like LeBron is just really fed up at the moment. 
I don't know whether he's fed up with the team, which it seems also like he is at the moment. I won't lie. He's He said some things to the media that maybe he now regrets, but I mean, I don't think he'll say that, obviously. And he's obviously talked to the management. But the, the thing is, and nobody really talks about this, I have a feeling, and this may just be me, may just be me, but let me know what you think about this. LeBron James, he probably, in my opinion, went to the management and said, look, we need a backup point guard. We need to do something. Our team isn't playing that well right now. We need a backup point guard. Get us a facilitator. And I don't think they were doing anything. I, I think he knew that they weren't going to do anything. So I think he came out to the media and said all, all about what he said. He said, you know, we need a facilitator. We need a backup point guard. I think he went to the media and said that just to make, you know, the whole world of basketball know that they need someone like that. And I think all of this hype has now forced the management to actually do something about it. Now, this is just a theory I have. Maybe it's all obviously just speculation right now at this point. But if LeBron James went to the management and said we need a backup point guard, surely he would have gone there first, right? I know LeBron James has messed up in the past, but really he's been he's been a pretty good guy. I mean, he's done... See, like he said, actually, like he said, he's been one of the better players in the NBA, not in terms of the way he's played, but what he's done off the court, as well as what he's done on the court as well, which, I mean, he obviously thought Charles Barkley did otherwise with all the with all the things he said about Barkley, but let me know down below what do you think about the whole situation. It's tough because Charles Barkley has said some things about LeBron James in the past that, uh, that obviously LeBron James didn't like, and I think he's really just letting it all out right now and it's probably the worst, it's just the worst timing for Charles Barkley at this point. Let me know what you think though, it would be awesome if you guys could smash that like button. Let's try and aim for 3,000 likes for the next episode, and I'll catch you guys there. Hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in my next video. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, and yeah, peace.